Thank you, Sir Shark. Th thank you. Well, hello there. Don't you look swell? I don't know. I have a very important question for you. What is this plant doing for you guys? Is it doing anything? Does it look cute? Are you enjoying it? This one, this big one here. I wanted to fill this because it feels like it's like, look, look at it without it, right? Like without it, you see the cord, it's just a blank wall, it's kind of weird, right? If I sit here, it's like, it's just empty. But maybe that's okay. Boom. Problem solved. At least I thought. It's so big that it's like overwhelming. Last week, last week. Not last week, sorry, last month? It's been a month, I know. But if you remember from the last video, I don't know if I actually said this in the video, but I don't know if I can if I can be posting as much as I can be because I've been filming for the summer for a show. Oh, I don't know if I've ever said that. I'm not gonna say that here. I'm gonna tell you guys when it comes out so that you can see it, because then that'll be more exciting for you, I think. Or maybe not, maybe you don't, you're not interested in the show at all and you don't even wanna, you don't even wanna know. Anyways, it's been a while since we posted, but the last episode we reacted to was episode 11. Chloe was poor, she was going to work and being late to class all the time. Michelle saw her on the bus and then saw how hard she was working to try and make it to class on time. And that Emily didn't understand. And then that's what like pushed Michelle over the edge. And also we got that great sound bite of Michelle saying, Guys, I'm just trying to be kind. Have you even asked her why she's late? We'd love to ask her if she was ever here. Sometimes Emily gets a bit out of control. I kind of have to reel her back in and kind of put her back in her place a little bit. I know I've talked about this so many times about how Miss Kate is very much on the sidelines of the story and like what goes on because so much responsibility is given to the dance captain. I also saw a comment from someone, oh, I can't remember who said it. Dance captain is basically like this made up title, kind of like assistant manager in the from the office. <laughs> Emily is kind of like the Dwight, except in this instance, the dance captain gets a lot of responsibility. And they did that on purpose because they want the kids to make the decisions and to make the mistakes and have the adults kind of close by so they still feel safe. Like the audience watching, the kids watching, you, kids. Kiddos. I just came to apologize. <laughs> Brennan, nice. Well done. I don't know if he was directed to do that or not. What I did was really unprofessional and, and mean. I, I'm sorry. Wow, so she actually apologizes. What's the catch here? I don't mean that apology. I'm apologizing to keep my role as dance captain, which means the world to me. Your role for life? Ew, 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 I hate her. I'm pretending like I'm caring about her and she's totally buying it. So the only thing that Emily cares about is being dance captain. Or that's what she says. There's another big thing. What people say and what characters say and the characterizations that they have, the outside part of them that they try to put out onto the world, into the world, is not always the truth. The true inner self, the inner uh, motivations behind everything. And when Emily kind of does change and become more like, you know, connected with everyone else, it's because she learns that like, oh, even though I'm, I'm the best dancer or whatever, everyone hates me. I don't want to be alone, you know? And I think that's her big arc of the season or even of the series. One, two, and three, four, and five, six, I'm choreographing a new dance to get rid of Emily. This is the thing that I love about Michelle, and this is what Victoria is doing, is because she's just so like genuine and sweet, and she's so young in this show, she doesn't have any like malicious intent behind anything that she's doing. There's no undertone of, of self-awareness, because when you're 13, who is self-aware? No one. And so she just is trying to be nice and trying to be kind to everyone, and she's just saying, you know, the facts of what the situation is. And that's why it comes across as so funny because she's just being so genuine. <laughs> and yet what she's saying is kind of mean. I'm choreographing this dance right now to get rid of Emily. <laughs> I as an adult can't say that without laughing. For anyone who doesn't know, we shot the next step. Seasons one to three, I'm pretty sure, all in a school, an old abandoned school. And they just took like the gymnasium is where they built Studio A. And then they built uh, in one of the classrooms, they built 
this studio and it was so tiny that they couldn't put up fake walls or anything. So they just used the floor as is and then draped tarp over the like cabinets that are there. And then they put like some couches and whatever to make it look like a lounge area within Studio B as if it was like two separate spaces, I think. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was such a tight space that when you once you put the cameras in there dancing and it was like kind of impossible. And so that's why whenever we're dancing in that studio, it kind of looks like we're marking because we're not able to physically do it full out. When I hear that three of my best dancers are in the studio, I'm kind of curious. What are they doing? That's something else they got rid of. Us answering the questions that they asked, putting the question into the answer so that it explains it more to the audience. But as an adult watching it, I'm like, oh, kind of sounds like an essay a little bit. But they asked us to do it so that we knew as the audience what you are talking about. When Chris walks into the studio, I think we're all busted. My heart kind of skips a beat a little. My heart kind of skips a beat a little. <laughs> my heart kind of skips a beat a little. Oh my gosh, that's something I would definitely say. Oh, we're supposed to be in Studio A. Yes. We were wondering where everyone was. You know, I covered it up good. Just pretended that we were waiting for him. No worries, come right, on, hurry up. Go, go, go. This is something I'm realizing too. Getting to know James a little bit more and then getting to know Riley a little bit more, it's making me realize as an adult watching this, that they're not actually meant to be together. <gasps> I'm so sorry. I know you guys are coming at me in the comments right as we speak, I know it. But it's true because Riley is so detail oriented and very like dedicated, hardworking, maybe takes things too seriously, but she needs someone else who is also detail oriented and who is also very hardworking and, you know, and James is hardworking, but he's way more laid back and kind of goes with the flow and allows things to kind of come to him and takes the opportunities as they come rather than goes out and, and tries to get opportunities outside of his comfort zone. I understand why they they fall in love and whatever, because it's like opposites attract and like Riley's supposed to be like the awkward, insecure girl. And that's why she gets the guy. But I don't see it anymore now um, that we haven't been caught. He doesn't know. So thank goodness. We're fine. I even in this talking head, I'm relieved to find out that we haven't been caught. Am I in the shot? Yes. This is such a wide shot. Should I zoom it in? The whole apartment is on show. Well, okay, how about that? You can still see me. Is that better? Oh, that's way better, actually. Do you guys feel better? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's great and everything, don't get me wrong, it's very energetic, but I don't know, I want something more. I want something more fun, more groovy. More fun, more groovy. At this age, I was 16, I speak like I'm 42 sometimes. Maybe I still do that. Do I still do that? No, because now I'm older, so now it's like 52? Oh God. Oh my God. Look at that final pose that Brennan and I decided to do. Like, cool, sure, but what the, like everyone else is just posing. Everyone else is just there. But we said full layback, tilt, double, tr double like partnering thing. What, why? Imagine at competition, you'd have to hold that. You have to hold that. And then also everyone else is so relaxed. It just doesn't fit the rest of the room. This is the reason why I'm saying this is because we chose our poses and Brennan and I would just go over the top when like it would have been way easier if we just decided to do, to just like pose normally. Cause then also cameras can catch, like I would, I would have done this very differently if we were choreographing it today for this specific show. Some shows might be different, but like this specific show, we just didn't know the assignment yet. Riley, James, and Michelle seem particularly lazy. It just seems like people aren't committed. Psst. Psst. Hey. Hey, it's me, Brittany from the future. And I'm here to tell you that your privacy is in danger. I know, I didn't realize, I thought that my privacy wasn't either, but it turns out that it is, and it's because you're not using Surfshark VPN, Surfshark VPN. This is an ad. First and foremost, thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. I can't believe we're getting sponsors. This is very exciting. I don't know why I said we, me, well, we, it's a collective thing, you and I. Anyways, let's talk about them, shall we? With Surfshark, you protect your data against all of those dang, you know, uh, uh, cyber thieves. Thieves stealing your data. 
without your permission. Surfshark gets rid of that. I don't know how, essentially they secure your data with industry leading measures by using uncrackable encryption and the most secure VPN protocols. No, I did not read that off of a paper. Another great feature that I love from Surfshark that I've been using quite a lot lately, if I want to watch a TV show like The Next Step or Friends or The Office or other great shows like that, and it's not available in my country, I will just switch over my VPN server and make it look like my computer is in the country where those shows are available, and then I have access to it. So it's pretty sneaky, but it works. You essentially get unlimited what is the word I'm looking for? You can watch a lot of shows. You can watch a lot of stuff now, more than you are now currently because you have access to the world library. <laughs> Anyways, one subscription allows you to install and run Surfshark on an unlimited amount of devices at the same time. It's also a 30 day money back guarantee, which gives you plenty of time to try out Surfshark. And then if you don't like it, it's a 30 day money back guarantee. If you are interested, please go to the link. Oh my God. Can you guys hear the toilet flushing in the background? Go to the link in my description and use code Brittany for 83% off and your first three months free. Free. So it's a lot of money less. It's a lot less money. You're paying way less than anyone else who doesn't watch my videos. So I think the moral of the story here is that you should probably subscribe to my channel, click the bell button, and also thank Surfshark for sponsoring because they give you the best deals. What can I say? Back to the video. <laughs> I come into B Studio because this is where I keep my extra socks. And I get suspicious because I see Riley, James, and Michelle rehearsing something. What are you guys doing in B Studio? <laughs> where I keep my extra socks? That was a Frank line. Frank, the creator of the show, always gave West the weirdest lines. Weirdest. That was one of them. Should we invite him into the dance or not? Uh, this is the thing, this show always does this where they hold on reaction moments while nothing else is happening in the scene. But because they're cutting close, it makes sense. And as you're watching it, you don't think anything of it. But I'm just imagining what Wes must be thinking watching all of us, right? Like I'm here, I'm here, Michelle's here, James is there, wherever. Yeah, you good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope none of them stole my socks. Oh crap, he's looking, he's looking. We're gonna have to just say mm, something soon. Mm, busy. Probably yeah, thinks we're crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And Wes is just there like, hello? At least that's what I think he would be thinking. Love it. <laughs> well, you know, I got some good ideas. I mean, why don't we, you know, we just add a little bit of, you know, some. But you're gonna have to teach us. Yeah. I... Yeah, no problem, man. All right. I am, what did I just do? I went, yeah. West being in the routine is probably one oh, of the Oh, that's this happen. thing! So addicted to Did I just remember that? <laughs> I don't know if I should be proud of that, though. <laughs> She's so cute. That was amazing. Tiffany is a great actress. I had no idea that she was that good. I have to say something about this because this was something that I always thought when I was acting on this show especially, I always thought that if you could show some kind of an emotion, not just crying, that that meant that you were a good actor. And that's kind of what they're saying here is that because Tiffany can make herself look like she's crying and show that she's sad because of this thing and that's how she's affected by it, that that means that she's a good actor. But that is the most common misunderstood part of acting. And I'm saying this to anyone out there who is an actor who maybe needs to hear this because I needed to hear this at this point. You can't prepare an emotional state ahead of time. For example, if you think about an, a conversation that you might have, you're about to break up with someone and that conversation is naturally going to be a big conversation that you want to go a particular way and so you want to think about it ahead of time. Maybe you write down ideas of things that you can say or maybe you're not that analytical and you're not like me at all and you just wing it. But a lot of the times, if you're human, you'll probably think about it ahead of time. Flash forward to you actually having that conversation and it doesn't go at all like you planned. And then you think back on it after the fact and you're like, why did I say all of those things? I did nothing like I prepped it. You have to think about your performances as an actor in the exact same way. Because acting is, is a very courageous thing. If you, if you can just 
exist and be as honest and as open as possible, even if you're feeling really uncomfortable, even if you know that the scene is gonna maybe show a bit of your ugly side, if you don't let it because you prepped it a specific way and you think that that's the right way to do it, it's gonna come off as stale. How are you, how are your brothers? Brothers are good. We don't really talk because we're mostly just stuffing our mouths with food and playing video games. My relationship with Elden is still non-existent, but I definitely don't hate him as much as I used to, and maybe he's a little bit cute. The impossible happened. Emily is falling for Elden, everyone. Shocker. <laughs> the reason why it's it happens is because anytime a, a show or a film sets up a storyline, you want to see it through to the end in some way. And so when we see, when we first see Elden hitting on Emily, and she turns him down, the first thought that we have as an audience member is, okay, so when are they gonna get together? When are they gonna try this? And whether or not it works out, we don't know as audience members watching this. I mean, we know, because we've seen the show before, because we're true T TNS fans, right? But don't Emily and Eldon, no, and Michelle and Eldon get together, isn't that it? Oh my gosh. Just so many things wedging in between Emily and Michelle as possible. So, as many things as possible. With Wes and all that tutting. Oh my gosh, go. like yeah. this thing, who would have thought of that? I know. It was so it was sick. Sweet. I can't, I can't even remember it, but whatever. I'm really excited. <laughs> I was really bad at improv <laughs> This was improv and so they said, talk about the routine. And the only things that we knew at that point were that West is now in the routine. He taught us tutting and we're excited about it. And so we're repeating those three points in different ways as much as we can, because we don't know how to make up new stuff. Emily's your sister. It's gonna be war. Is dance more important than my sister? Okay, so remember how earlier I was saying like you can't force an emotion? In that instance, is dance more important than my sister? I was thinking more about how good of a conflict that is for my character at this point. I'm performing it rather than actually asking myself the question. You don't have to add the drama on top of it. Does that make sense? In the moments where I'm not trying to add that on top, it works really well because Riley's kind of awkward and she's a little bit weird and I'm not comfortable with that weird yet so I don't know how to use it to my advantage. I'm like cringing because, <laughs> because I was so awkward and it was really sweet and I shouldn't be too hard on myself, I know. That's really pretty and looks great on you, but put it in one of your routines, not one of my routines. All right, okay. I thought that once Emily apologized to me that it would be a start to a whole new friendship, but now I realize that maybe things are never gonna change. Yeah. Emily's just so unlikable. And then that's why they had to kind of redeem her. That was a big thing I think they said of like in season two or something, or the second half of season one that they wanted to get rid of the e-girls and to make Emily nicer because she was too mean. And that's like a, a big thing with kid shows. They don't always want the mean girl to be, or the mean person, the bad character to be that bad, to be that mean. And Emily's really mean in this instance, in this world for a kid show, right? Like she's not a drug smuggling, d drug deal, drug lord, de drug person. She's not smuggling drugs or anything, but she's, why did I, why do I always go to drugs? I'm not interested. And if you guys knew what was good for you, you wouldn't even be doing this right now. We could have just ruined Damn. it. Damn. End of episode. All right, final thoughts right away. Ow. I don't know when I will learn to not wear earrings during this because then I then the thing sits and it pokes my ear, my neck, and it hurts. This is very helpful for me. I'm kind of learning more about my own habits as an actor and how much I've improved. I think, I would like to think I've improved. I'm going to be posting more. I've already improved. Last time I waited like three or four months to post a video, this time it's only one. You're welcome. I'm also gonna be posting other kinds of videos. I'm gonna be posting more vlogs and other stuff because I know you guys like mentioned that you wanna see that stuff and I just wanna post what I wanna post, okay? Get off my back. Please like this video. Comment whatever you'd like share it with your friends and subscribe and subscribe because all of those things help this channel. It helps me make money and money helps me make these videos 
And a perfect example of that is this camera right here. This is a Sony camera. What is the camera? A7S? Three? Mark III? You're playing video games right now, so you can hear what I'm saying. Ben, you can't hear what I'm saying. Yeah, he can't hear what I'm saying. It's a very pricey camera, and I spent money on it because I was able to from AdSense because you guys watched my videos, so thank you. And that's why I can, you know, upgrade this a little bit more. The setup, you know, I can make more videos when you guys watch and subscribe and like my stuff and all of that. So thank you. That's the episode. Bye. Bye. Leave now. You're done. We're done. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Bye. Now leave. Thank you. But maybe watch more of my other videos. That'd be nice. <laughs>